going on there? Hello and welcome to Anderson's TV. My name is Jack Duxbury and socially distanced, joined by the rather lovely... Oh, darling. Philip. I am Philip from Modal. Last time I looked. Philip, what have you brought for us today? I brought our new toy. I thought you might like to have a look at it. Because no one the... actually else has seen it outside the company apart from you. you and are... Taylor's in the room. Taylor's seen it. And everyone at home. It's, it looks... I, I'm familiar with this form factor. Very blue. Very blue. Some might even say cobalt. <sighs> I'd never thought of that. <sighs> Uh, this is the new Cobalt 8, and you're right, it's, obviously we released the Argon 8 last year, mm -hmm. which uh, was the last time I was here, last time I saw you, um, and we were closer then, <laughs> it's nothing personal, um, and Argon 8, we brought a lot of new technology in um, to a wavetable-based synthesizer. And that's because wavetables, you can do some really amazingly cool stuff. Wavetables work by having little bits of digital data and you play that little bit of data over and over and over again to create a waveform. And because that data has lots of different steps in, it can sound quite harsh and metallic and glassy. And that's why with wavetable synths, you get this really rich, very, very um, metallic or glassy tone sometimes. Um, and that was one thing we wanted to do with the, the technology we developed. But we also wanted to take the virtual analog space even further in the same way we did with wavetables. So Cobalt is what we call our extended virtual analog engine. And what it does differently is instead of using wavetables, it uses virtual analog oscillator representations of waveforms. But that would just be too easy. So we've got to do it differently because that's what we like doing. And the extended part of the virtual analog means that we have two algorithm engines. Uh, what's an algorithm engine? So yeah. you can take a waveform and basically mangle it. If you've ever, have you played with any modular since any any a uh, couple, Euro but badly, stuff? but yeah. I, I'm really into it. I lo I'd love to be better at it. Yeah. Right, and that's actually the problem is that getting good results out of modular is really difficult. What the algorithm engines do is do some of the cool stuff you might do with a modular synth, but just put it on a couple of knobs and give you complete control. Um, I can give you some examples of that. So this, what I was showing here is that this patch I was playing earlier, if it's all right. There's a lot going on there. So that's exactly the point. Cobalt has so much movement and, and Argon, they both were designed to have a lot of movement and dynamics in sound. And that's what makes sound interesting, right? Is, is dynamics and movement. If you have a sterile sound that doesn't evolve, it can be quite bland and it doesn't necessarily fit in. And with the, with the Argon, uh, and with Cobalt, the, the movement within the sound means you've got a lot more you can work with in terms of sound design and creation, and, and certainly composers love it. I know several major film composers have, have leapt onto Argon, uh, and we're hoping they'll love Cobalt as well. But what we have with the two algorithm engines, my soft pad, uh, and I've got a bit of um, fade in there on Aftertouch. And actually, that's not controlling the filter. And it sounds like a filter, but actually what we're doing is we're changing parts of the algorithm behavior. So it's all inside the oscillators. I love that. Whoa. There's, There's a little bit of, uh, yeah, it's very in vogue, isn't it? That sort of, was it the Stranger Things that's kind of brought in this whole sort yeah. of a bit of dark pitch bend? And you can map that in lots of different ways. And again, you've got massive modulation matrix, so you can take all these lovely performance inputs. You can actually use an MP controller as well. And that's, oh, that's cool. Yeah, because I mean, again, Cobalt, just like Argon, supports MPE. So if you've got a Roly C board, or if you've got a Keith McMillan KMI um, board, or an instrument, you can use it to uh, control all these performance parameters inside uh, both Cobalt and Argon. It's something we've had in for a while. Um, but with the algorithm engine on Cobalt, I can go and change, uh, let's have a look. So I've got, Check the bias on the mix. So right now we're playing the second algorithm, the right-hand algorithm, and I can change to a much more gentle, soft, traditional virtual analog, very sine wavy. Let's go break it apart. I'm spacing it out, and again, just as we pioneered with, in fact, with Sculpt and with uh, Craftsin and with Argon, we like lots of oscillators. And when you've got lots of oscillators, a bit like a guitar with 12 strings, you can start to spread the detune around and that phasing interaction makes it really interesting. So we just tighten up that spread and then go. I'm not using any modulation. All I'm doing is just playing with the oscillators. So we have a two algorithm virtual analog synthesizer. That's what Cobalt is.
and I'm watching almost like continually variable wave shaping of all traditional analog waveforms Correct. blendable between two. You got it. So two got engines. All the colors. So it's not two wave. waveforms, it's two complete engines because actually you can within some of the engines <sighs> actually be blending across multiple waves as well. So it can get much like you do in a modular. Again, if you're working yeah. with a modular, you might take four or five different oscillators, patch those together, and then put a wave folder in and some other bits and pieces. Um, problem is to do that is complex. Um, it's also expensive because this is an eight voice polyphonic synth. And with a Euro. It's so unique with eight voices at this size. Yeah. Um, it's, um, it, you know, the, the, the construction is the same really high quality construction we made for Argon. It's this, I don't want to go and lift it up. If you um, ever see um, one, could the, one the aluminium. one expect with our Argon, it ended up being a module and so it may be perhaps in the future. Because that would, what a, what a good I'd idea. be dying Quick, for an eight voice desktop virtual analog, analog star synthesizer. Actually, the, the Argon M, 8M, has been really well received. And yeah, I, think, yeah, so. I love that when you brought that out. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the thing, we, we, back in 2017, 2018, when we announced us a changing direction from the 002s and the 008s, we said we had a lot of product plan coming out. And in fact, actually, there's another four or five things we're working on already for next year. So- um, You kept your word. You yeah, will, yeah, actually, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm really blessed because I get to work with the best group of guys in the world, and uh, girls in the world. You know, we have some amazing engineers and we've got so many ideas. And um, it's, we were talking earlier about this whole crazy COVID thing mm -hmm. that's changing the way we work and actually to, to have a group of uh, people who are being so creative still through all of this. It's, I'm really lucky, so I'm great. I'm very lucky to be able to work with them. Beautiful. So, so we've got that core of it, which is the, the algorithms. Yeah. I'm thinking in my layman mind, these oscillators almost. And then yes, where, where right. do we go next? So, well, let's go have a look. So we're, we're a VA synth. We are not really looking at what Wavetable does. That's not our thing in Cobalt. Obviously, Argon does that brilliantly. Um, and so one of my favorite sounds, uh, and certainly John Bicker we're talking about, uh, my colleague, uh, he loves sync sounds, because we're prog rock fans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We admit it. Um, but uh, I hope this doesn't blow the monitors out, but... Uh... <laughs> I use the aftertouch. And again, that's using um, here, particularly, a EWM on the second waveform. And on the first waveform, I'm using something we call a fractal square wave. Mention these are algorithm engines. And what I mean by that is that we're actually able to compute on the fly the virtual analog waveforms and munge them up and do weird stuff to them. So in this example, actually got two PWMs that are opposing, being synced together, and I'm chasing the asymmetry of the framing of the PWMs. Really, some of the, the guys in the team, uh, we call them the wizards, yeah. or hell wizards, um, they've produced some incredible algorithms. And to do this stuff, you can, you could do this on a Eurorap modular with about 40 grand's worth of modules, and it would be mono. So this is an eight voice poly, uh, but this kind of sync sound. <laughs> blended with that so so I'm moving away from the PWM back into a bigger PWM And I'm not going anywhere near the filter. That's just the oscillators we're playing with. Wow. A few so, things just to, percent. as I'm the first guy to see it and my reactions, incredible viewing angle on that screen. It's and cool, if, isn't and it? And if you can't get, because I can, that's what I'm peering at. And if my excitement there, and if some people say I get overexcited, I was just thinking of when Nick Back gets his hand on that. He's actually already, he's actually got his. He's got it with, oh, with the fractal, fractal square yes, ways yes. the PWM. He's yes. going to, the internet's going to explode. We are hoping <laughs> that Nick will emerge as a new fractalized version of himself. Yes. Uh, oh. Yeah. So uh, obviously. What 
it's so clear what you're saying and when you explain it to me i hope you get that through on the screen if you don't uh make sure you just get to see one when it comes out because we've got a lot of very informative yeah, there's a lot of yeah. videos coming out uh, um, uh in a week or so which discuss great um uh, more about that it's important to say that's not an oscilloscope because people often say oh, why don't you put an oscilloscope on your synth well <laughs> if you've got a very simple subtractive synthesizer where all you're doing is taking a simple waveform, a little bit of EG, a little bit of mod, and then dropping it out. You can do that. There is so much processing going on inside this engine. You've seen just a few things we've played yeah. with just in, in one patch. You couldn't, you need another major computer It seems like it was here. flicking modes to we're show you. We're showing the waveform effect, but we, we, we can't show all the modulation, because again, Argon's got 12 modulation buses. Um, mm. And you, 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 so much you can do to it. So, but it really helps you understand the waveforms. And again, one of the things I'm really proud of is our modal app, um, which uh, we, you can run on your phone. So you know, if you if you want to plug into your, your smartphone you, or your, a tablet or your computer, you can actually see on the big screen a lot more about what's going on. And it really does take the workflow. And we, we do talk about workflow in synthesizers these days for sound design. You can go beyond the front panel and, and actually extend into the bigger screen space and it's it, then just take this on the road and go and play and um, the modal app enables you to see a lot more about what's going on in the waveforms it's uh, yeah it's important so we it's why we spent the effort on it brilliant so we're then moving into filtering it in my well, old my old school virtual before, we, analog before brain. we do before we do there's something i want to show you okay. um i get requests from the, the team can you show this to jack please it's like so here is number one of your requests. Yeah. Um, they asked me to play this. This is still staying with the oscillators. Um now, that sound is utilizing the ability to... It's fat because it drifts. If you remember the old, high-quality old classic analog synthesizers sounded fat because actually the oscillators were all over the place. Um, and as we got more digital, we lost a bit of that. So with uh, the extended virtual analog engine we've created for Cobalt, and it's actually something we pioneered in Argon and in fact back in Sculpt, we have lots of oscillators. In fact, the algorithms are vary the number of oscillators available, but generally four, up to four uh, oscillators per, weight, per, per uh, voice on Cobalt. And we can shift the phasing of those. Mm -hmm. So uh, that sound. <laughs> I'm just pushing the oscillators out in the stereo field. So again, I'm still not going near the filter. Um, we can have a little look at the filter. Again, something that's unique about Cobalt is we developed, a, specifically for Cobalt, a software implementation of a four-pole ladder filter. And um, something that we were, because of course we used a four-pole ladder filter in the 002, which is, uh, we talked about when we met you first. Um, a Ferrari. Uh, well, thank you. Sorry. It I, is. You try to lick it. You try to lick my synth. <laughs> yeah, go back. I was so into it. <laughs> <laughs> Keep away. Um, but the football. Heady days. <laughs> the, we were young. We were, we were young. <laughs> yeah. The four pole ladder filter in 002 is really unique because it's a morphable four pole ladder filter. And so we couldn't just put any old four pole. Uh -huh. We had to develop a morphable. And so with this. <laughs> turn the resonance on. It's a really musically tunable and useful ladder mm. filter. Um, so yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah, it's got that squishy, squelchy ladder filter thing. Uh, and there's been a huge amount of effort in, in design gone into that. And we're really proud of it. Beautifully displayed as well. I mean, crikey, if you, someone wants to learn about this stuff, that is incredible, that little screen. Well, it's got some more tricks in the filter. Yeah, so, so you so said it's more... It's morphable. So and, we, we um, move between band pass and... And multi-mode? It's multi-mode. So I can go and change, and if you're looking on the screen, uh, I can change to... We're using what's called a balanced low-pass filter uh, implementation there, but I can go to a balanced high-pass, and I'm going to use one I love called the balanced phase shift filter. And that's something we introduced in the 008, which I also brought so with me last time. <laughs> If 
I go and put something simple like an art on. been infected you have synth face he had synth face <laughs> and you've got this. i just wanted to close my eyes because the screen yeah i didn't want to just look at the screen and listen to what what, what is that doing then well that's uh, just one of the things whilst we're here play with it we're playing with the arpeggio that's showing the, the actual uh, behavior of the filter so okay, yeah. uh you can see that it's shelving off we've got the baseline of the actual pass what's passing through and what's right. being cut out at the different frequencies as we move through the uh, the frequency range but i'll just quickly one of my favorite features about uh, our arpeggiator is the programmable arpeggiator so we, here we're going we're just playing simple notes but i can go and You, you know, Even Taylor got excited because he's he's had to edit out hours of me floundering around trying to learn synths. He's like, oh, Jack might even get that. <laughs> but the arp, I mean, the arp on this is, is a programmable. I mean, you've got loads of other patterns in arts you can create if you want to. But just if you, I like putting in a yeah. You can also do, you can transpose arts when they're playing, so you can then transpose sequence. It's a real performance instrument. I mean, to, what's important to us as a company is a synth's got to be all round. I mean, you know, money's tight these days and you've got to be able to get as much stuff into a synth as possible. And that's why Argon's got the Fatar key bed. You know, it's just beautiful to play on. It's the best in the world, in my opinion. Um, but it's got all the performance input controls as well as the, the modal app. Everything is, is there and Cobalt and Argon share all of these features, um, but just two very different voice engines. Um, if I go back and just uh, load. Ne next on the path will be, are, are we envelope Well, yes, LFOE? that's a very good place. I mean, in fact, again, uh, envelope LFOE and also showing how we can morph between the two algorithm engines. It might be an idea. So here's a little pad. You've got a bit of LFOE doing some of the modulation of the pitch. You've then got the LFO, the, because there are three LFOs inside Cobalt. Um, and they're moving the uh, shift between the balance between the two algorithm engines. And then you've also got some EG going on as well, pushing the opening suite. And there's another one we can maybe go and pick, which, uh, bear with me a second. Of course, I'm not wearing my glasses, which is really not very sensible, but there we go. Uh, this one is another example of what's going on. This is not using a sequencer at all. So this is just using so the arpeggiator to play a sequence, but the LFO is cycling through. So you listen to the polyrhythms going on. It's not a static arm. Yeah, we got LFOs. Quite unique, that. that. That sounded almost wave y to me. So that's really interesting, because I, I have this discussion, people say, oh, it doesn't sound, something doesn't sound analogue. You're pushing that. So if you listen to Craftworks Autobahn, 1977, they only had analogue synthesizers, and it doesn't sound very analogue. And that's because what all synthesizers do is take different harmonic elements, at, like a guitar, strings, and control them, and contour them, shape them, like the body on the guitar, and enable you to control the sound. And the best synthesizers, in my opinion, give you the 
quickest and most immediate access to the control of the sound. But you're right, what we're hearing here is just a particular algorithm. There's actually an inverted PWN, so it's a reversed PWN saw wave. No, it's not Batman. Yeah, he has. <laughs> change the DC offset within the saw waves there. And again, it's these two algorithm engines and we're currently running with a bias to just the left-hand side one. Let's see what's on the right. Whole new realm of sound over on the right-hand side. And again, you could put that mix control and map it to an expression pedal. So you can be sat on stage and you can be then effectively. Really expressive performance instrument. And would you say if you if someone demoing the, this going through the presets, that's where you'd first go is maybe kind of. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, everyone tends to grab the cut off, and that's normal. But I mean, again, one of the things Seems we've tried to do. Feature. Yeah, one of the things we've tried to do is there's quite a lot of sequences. So uh, we have a 512 uh, note sequencer built in, um, and it's both step and real time on uh, oh, both Cobalt wow. and Argon. So they share the same sequencer. And so this, um, I'm, I'm going to let the synth. <laughs> I wish I'd had that with the kids were younger. I could just put them to bed and put that on. It been and I love the it's the amount you packed into that chassis. So again, I can I see the steps with the lights going. You know that feedback on the back. There, mm. what have we got on the back? Uh, you've got headphone, yeah. which is obviously very important if you live in a house with other people sometimes. Yeah. Um, when you don't live in a house with other people, you've got the two nice loud outputs here. Uh, we've also got sustain and expression input because this is a performance input uh, a machine. Um, we've also got sync, which enables you to sync up to Volker's Teenage Engineering uh, uh, and other stuff on the five o'clock. Cool. We've got the USB, which um, is used not only for the uh, modal app updating, but also patch interchange. Uh, you can upload patches yeah, really quickly, no sysx, you just simply just click and, and, and drag and drop and done. Uh, and power. Um, so yeah, a very I simple, but all the things you need. an audio input in there. There is an audio input, indeed, thank you what, for reminding what me. What can I go? So it's into the effects. Into so the effects. Yeah, yeah, as, as in Argon's uh, voice engine, it goes into the effects, but again, all of the effects. Because I love an audio input. As I go, with my synths in there, I'm looking to either use the filters or the effects. What if, but the effects, what have we got in there? So the we have three buses of effects. Uh, probably the best thing is let's go actually. Three uh, buses. Uh, three buses. We've also got a load of presets as well in the effects. So in here, um, we can go and reload um, a basic chorus preset. Uh, we've got a phaser. And these are all different uh, combinations of the three effects buses being brought together. But again, you can bring in your audio input and process it through that as well. Wild. A lot of chaps are using their synthesizers and then maybe okay. using a Turn small mixer, busing out to some effects pedals, and that's Absolutely. like having three effects. Absolutely, synths. because if you have got another synth, you could bring it in through this and then uh, uh, turn the audio input and then use that as a way of taking this in, into your computer or whatever you're using. Absolutely, yeah. Or if you've got um, another synth and you just want it's an older synth and you want to give it a bit of zhuzh, mm -hmm. you can bring it through the effects section here and then combine the outputs. Yeah, it's a really useful tool. This is, you know, Hot, no one else has seen this, apart, obviously apart from Nick. When, when is this video going to air? When are we going to be talking to the people? Do you uh, think? 29th of October is the date we actually announce. So we're so right, we've time travelled. We, we are very, very soon, yeah. Uh, I think we're about, so we're, what's today, 23rd? So we've got six days left, six days, yeah. So um, we'll be announcing. But the great thing is they're actually in the factory and they're going on to the... Uh, the transports they will be going on choo choo and hopefully yeah yeah there's a lot to learn about modal if you don't already know you've just built your own video suite you're going to be doing your own videos well, a lot more this comes back to what we we're talking about the, the fact we can't travel you know I, mean, I, I just love going and seeing people and um, uh, it's really sad you can't uh, and I don't know about you, but I spend my life on Zoom. I mean, literally, it's like oh, that Zoom and that Zoom. <laughs> and um, the problem with that is that uh, when you've got to show what you're making and you're trying to get and explain some, to someone the, the intricacies of a product, you need an environment like this. And, and we were really uh, inspired by what you guys have done here. 
and so we've copied it basically. Oh, I'm sorry, we built our own. Um, no, we've got our That's little great. production desk. And go watch it. And go watch it because I always feel like this. You know, we're essentially a retailer at the end of it, and it, often the, some of the comments are like, "It's so deep, you haven't gone in there." Go look at, you know. I just am editing or Final Cut Pro. Go look at the modal YouTube channel. Thank go you. look at the yep. website. Yeah, we just, I just, in fact, I was about eleven o'clock last night. I was, I kind of, kind of collapsed with it. We're just editing. Um, it's going to be about twenty-five minutes of the first video going into the synth, but then there's about an hour and a half worth of content we're editing. So yeah, yeah my my computer has sort of steam coming out of it. Um, yeah, don't do multi multi cam clips in Final Cut Pro X. Bad news. <laughs> Taylor knows it. Uh, thanks so much. You know my pain. Thanks so much for coming. We've, we've actually pleasure. got the builders coming in, haven't we? So we, you have. We so need we've to clear go. out, Taylor. Can we get you to play just a couple of sounds? I'll play us out. And thanks for watching Anthony's TV. If you like what we're doing, consider subscribing. If you don't, let us know. We're grown ups. So we can take the hate, can't we? We'll be all right. And if not, go watch the Modal YouTube channel. See you later, guys. <laughs>